Hey guys, welcome to the Crash Course in Piano. I'm excited to get started with you. If you're not already at your keyboard, go ahead and get to it. Um, so what I want you to do first is sit down and position your belly button kind of in the middle of wherever the keyboard is. Okay, so uh, you might have a 44 key piano, which is fine for learning. Get your belly button kind of in the middle there. Um, and if you have an 88 key piano, which is great, get, get your belly button kind of in the middle and get seated. Okay, and I'll show you um, below how you're supposed to kind of position your fingers. You want to take your fingers and grab your knees and get kind of a natural curve. So the way to uh, better, best play the piano is to play your fingers with this curve. Don't play with straight fingers. This is bad, okay? You want to have things curved because it'll help you be able to play fast. Okay. So let's talk about some keyboard geography first. This is really the first thing that you need to learn. So the keyboard is organized in, uh, into groups of black notes and white notes. I want, you, I want you to notice something. If you closed your eyes and I played different notes and some were black and some were white, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. Uh, that's because both of them serve the same purpose. They just kind of play different pitches. So don't think that it switches up the sound if you play a black note or a white note. Now what is important about the black notes is keyboard geography. So if you look at your piano, you will notice that there are groups of two black notes all over the place. And if you want to go ahead and find those right now, that would be great. And there are, there are also groups of three black notes. You could take a second, just go through and practice. Okay, yeah, groups of two and groups of three. And just play them with any of the fingers that you want to. So that's how we find out kind of where things are. Uh, that being said, what we're gonna do is I want you to find the group of two black notes in the middle of your piano and look at the white note to the left of those two black notes. So here's our two black notes in the middle and here's the white note to the left. That is what we're going to call middle C. Uh, that's kind of the starting note with, with most piano lessons, um, and we're going to start there as well. Now, the names of the notes, I'm going to be referring to some different names. Uh, if you can say the alphabet from A to G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then you already know the names of the notes on the piano. So this is C. After C comes D. After D comes E. After E comes F and after F comes G. Go ahead and put your right hand on the piano and play all five of those, those notes. C, D, E, F, G. Do it again. C, D, E, F, G. Okay? Cool, and you can do it with your left hand too. Put your pinky on that C. C, D, E, F, G. And just play those five notes. Okay, and then the other two notes that we haven't talked about, these guys up here, A and B. So after G, it just starts over. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. Okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, if you've never played the piano before, and this is totally new, um, some good ways to drill this and to get this inside your brain is to go through the piano and practice finding all of the middle C's. So if you start, um, not middle C's, but C's in general, right? There's one middle C right there. But you can go down and find, there's a C down there, there's a C. And my kids, even my adult students, you know, I make them find, see how fast you can find the C's on the, oh, I made a mistake. See how fast you can find the C's on the piano. And do the same thing with D's, find a D and see how fast, right? The D is always in between the two black notes. So if you can find this D, you can find all of the Ds. Hopefully that simplifies a little bit, uh, the piano a little bit for you. You know, really if you can find the two black notes and you can find C here, you can use that information to find the rest of the notes on the piano because you know your alphabet. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about the guitar, and you're like, well, this is piano lessons. So guitars are actually usually easier for people to pick up. 
a lot of people will pick up a guitar and within a month or two be playing songs. The reason for that is because of chords. Because on the guitar, in early, you know, when you're just learning how to play the guitar, you focus on learning chords. And chords are like the backbone of popular songs. So what is a chord? Let's talk about that first of all. A chord is basically just more than one note being played at the same time. Okay, so if two notes are being played, and it's usually three, but if two notes are being played, then that is a chord. Um, the most common kind of chord, and what we're going to talk about most in this video and in this course, is a triad. A triad is just three notes that are played at the same time. So if you find, I would take your left hand now and find that middle C, and then I want you to skip a note and play E, and then I want you to skip another note and play G. Now I'm playing it weird, kind of like this, uh, because I want to show you how to do it, but but don't feel like you have to keep keep these fingers you know, underneath. Have all your fingers on the piano. But I'll do it just so you can see better. So those are the notes that make up a C chord. And we call it a C chord because C is on the bottom right here. So if we go from a C up to an F, that's two of the chords that are really common in pop songs. So the way I found that F chord is just pretend like your C, you know, there's like some cement in your hand, and then move your whole hand and move your pinky up to C, D, E, F, okay? And that is the second chord that you need to know to play most of your favorite songs when you're well on our way. The third chord that you need to know is the G chord, and it's just moving your hand up again. And the third, or the fourth and final chord that you really need to know to play most of the popular songs right now is the A minor chord. We're gonna get into later lessons why this is a minor chord and these other chords um, are just major chords, actually is what they're called. C major, F major, G major, and A minor. If you can play these four chords, you can play most songs that have been written and were popular in the last, oh, I don't know, in the last long time. <laughs> so uh, just practice finding those chords. C chord, F chord. You can also, I want you to notice, because we went through and we found different G's, different C's, uh, different A's, different F's, and hopefully you've done that on your own at this point. Um, you can play chords at different spots on the piano, right? A really good exercise now would be to find all of the C chords, right? Anywhere on the piano, depending on how big or small your piano is, there are all kinds of C chords all over the piano. And you can find these with both hands would be a good exercise. First find them with your left hand, uh, then find them with your right hand. Right? Um, and do the same thing with the F chord that we've learned. So remember, keep them in cement. It's always a play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one for all of these chords. Uh, and it's going to be like that for a while. So if you get that, then you're on the, on the right track. Find all the F chords all over the place. And find all of the G chords all over the place. Good. And it doesn't matter really, you know, what order. You can find them from uh, bottom to top, top to bottom. Just play them as you see them. I just want you to get familiar uh, with playing these chords on the piano and with kind of figuring out where they are. And this is the kind of thing that I'm going to want you to practice before our next lesson uh, tomorrow. Okay. So really simple. Just find a few simple chords. Okay. So now we're going to get into playing songs, right? All we need is a few chords and we can play hundreds of songs. We're going to focus on just a few today, but it's all going to be with this pattern. We're going to go from C, let me get my fingers right, C, all the way down to G. 
So C, keep your fingers in cement, move it down to the G chord, then move it up to the A minor chord, and then move it down, skip G, and go to F. Okay, so C, G, A, F. Let's do it a few more times. And believe it or not, you are playing most songs uh, written in the past 20, 30, 40 years. It's a, it's a real trend in pop music right now to just use those four chords. So let's talk about some of the songs that you can play knowing this pattern. Okay, let's go here. Well, you turned on me and you bet I felt it. I tried to catch you, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back Before the cold doesn't run out And I'll be playing in my bestest Nothing's gonna stop me but to find an adventure I reckon it's again my turn To win some Learn some But I won't hesitate No more, no more It cannot win I'm yours And it's that whole thing uh, thank you, thank you for a singing voice. Okay, it's not supposed to be that pretty, but um, anyway, those are the four chords used throughout that whole song. Um, there are a bunch more, so let's talk about um, a couple more. All you got to do really with these four chords is change, you know, how fast or slow or how many you play them. And you can usually figure it out just by listening to the song. Um, I really think that a lot of the things, you know, if you just learn a few simple principles, you can learn to listen to these songs and then play them yourself uh, by ear, just like by listening to the radio, because this pattern is so common, and I'll teach you how to recognize it. So another song that you could play is... Just a small town girl did something before where I was playing in patterns of four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I know some of you are probably having problems because I see this all the time in playing the chords down together, especially when I repeat it uh, in patterns like that. You might do, you know, uh, kind of not play all the notes at the same time like that. Um, so really try and get uh, your fingers to do that. Your fingers are different sizes, you know, so the pinky is shorter than the third finger or, and the thumb uh, is really short. So getting all notes to go down at the same time is really difficult for people. If you're having problems with that, don't worry, you're not alone. Lots of people do. Right. Um, so another song that you can play with that. Let me see my notes here I got. Okay. So. My life is thumbing. My life is short. I saw an angel of that I'm sure. She smiled at me on the subway, but she was with another man. And whatever the words are. <laughs> so that's Beautiful uh, by James Blunt. Um, or the chorus for this song. Forever young, I want to be forever young. Or a Beyonce song. If I were a boy, I think I would understand. How about this song is one of my favorites, the Beatles. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Right? And not uh, throughout these whole songs, they don't always use that same pattern. Sometimes they switch it up a little bit, but usually the pattern is with those four chords. And with some practice, 
I can teach you how to recognize those chords and how to hear when there's a uh, when it's a C chord, when it's a G chord. Uh, you know, because they use the same tricks over and over. So if you learn, if you can do this with three or four songs, you can do this with three or four hundred songs. <laughs> it's really that easy. Uh, let's see. I got some a few more. Here's a Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Sometimes I feel like I don't. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. Red Hot Chili Peppers use the same chord progression. So now we've gone through a lot of different kinds of groups, right? We got the Beatles, uh, you know, 50s, 60s music. We got the Red Hot Chili Peppers song from the 2000s, uh, and there's so, so, so many more. In fact, with this, on this page, I'm going to give you a list of songs that use this same chord progression, and I'd like you to go through and have fun and try and figure out, you know, how fast or slow you have to play those chords, and just try and sing along, you know, listen to the song, uh, then try and play those chords and sing along, sing the song to yourself. Um, so let's talk about the right hand for a second and something that you can do with your right hand at this stage of playing. You should go through and actually try and play chords with your right hand as well. Okay, and then... And then... And all I'm doing now is I'm playing the same chords with my right hand that I was playing with my left hand. And it creates kind of a bigger sound on the piano. So that's kind of the next step. I would practice that. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. You'll notice too this time, before I went down, I went C down to G. This time I'm going C up to G. It doesn't matter. A G chord on the piano is going to sound like a G chord. A minor chord will sound like an A minor chord. F will sound like an F major chord. And anywhere on the piano, I could play it. That's all F, and that's all C. This is all G. They're just different chords played all. You know, the same chord played all played all over the piano in different spots, rather. So that is going to do it for this lesson. Uh, tomorrow, what we're going to talk about is some different chord patterns. They're pretty similar to the ones that we talked about today, uh, but you know, just with some minor differences. And we're also going to talk about how you can take just these chords and some different things that you can do to expand on them. Because I could play, you know, sometimes I feel like, like we've done, but there's also a lot of possibilities. Sometimes I feel like I don't have. Okay, it sounds like what I was playing before, but fancier, right? And that's because I'm really just using those same chords. So I'm going to teach you some different ways that you can kind of spice this up uh, in the next lesson and, and the lesson after that. Make sure you watch in your email for the lesson tomorrow. And also make sure that you practice the things that we talked about today because tomorrow in the lesson, uh, we are going to build on those things. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.